Okay, tonight is the 8th of August, uh, and this is the 23rd night. Uh, we are talking on the Diga Nikaya Sutta. So we come to Sutta number 30, Lakana Sutta. Lakana means the marks, uh, marks of a great man. This is one of the most unimportant suttas uh, because I'm trying to go through all the suttas in the Diga Nikaya. So, uh, I'm reluctantly to go through this one. Thus have I heard. Once the Lord was staying at Savati in Jetavana, Natapindika's park. Monks, he said. And the monks replied, Lord. The Lord said, There are monks, these 32 monks, peculiar to a great man. And for that great man who possesses them, only two careers are open. If he lives the household life, he will become a ruler, a wheel-turning righteous monarch of the law. Conqueror of the four quarters, who has established the security of his realm and is possessed of the seven treasures. These are the wheel treasure, elephant treasure, horse treasure, jewel treasure, woman treasure, householder treasure, and as seventh, the counselor treasure. He has more than a thousand sons who are heroes of heroic stature, conquerors of the hostile army. He dwells having conquered this sea-girt land without stick or sword by the law. But if he goes forth from the household life into homelessness, he will become an Arahan, a Samasambuddha, who has drawn back the veil from the world. And what are these 32 marks? One, he has feet with level tread. This is one of the marks of a great man. Two, on the soles of his feet are wheels with a thousand spokes, complete with fellow and hub. Well, this one is a bit hard to believe. Lah. That's why I say yeah, I'm reluctant to go through this sutta. Three, he has projecting heels. Four, he has long fingers and toes. Five, he has soft and tender hands and feet. Six, his hands and feet are net like Seven, he has high raised ankles. Eight, his legs are like an antelope's. Nine, standing and without bending, he can touch and rub his knees with either hand. Ten, his male organs are enclosed in a sheath. 11. His complexion is bright, the colour of gold. 12. His skin is delicate and so smooth that no dust can adhere to his body. 13. His body hairs are separate, one to each paw. 14. His body hairs grow upwards, each one bluish black like collyrium, curling in rings to the right. 15. His body is divinely straight. 16. He has the seven convex surfaces. 17. The front part of his body is like a lion's. 18. There is no hollow between his shoulders. 19. He is proportioned like a banyan tree. The height of his body is the same as the span of his outstretched arms. And conversely, 20. His bust is evenly rounded. 21. He has a perfect sense of taste. 22. He has jaws like a lion's. 23. He has 40 teeth. 24, his teeth are even. 25, there are no spaces between his teeth. 26, his canine teeth are very bright. 27, his tongue is very long. 28, he has a Brahma-like voice, like that of the Karavika bird. 29, his eyes are deep blue. 30, he has eyelashes like a cow's. 31, the hair between his eyes is white and soft like cotton down. 32, his head is like a royal turban. This is one of the marks of a great man. These monks, these monks are the 32 marks peculiar to a great man. And for that great man who possesses them, only two courses are open. And sages of other communions know these 32 marks, but they do not know the karmic reasons for the gaining of them. Monks, in whatever former life, former existence or dwelling place, the Tathagata, being born a human being, undertook mighty deeds to good purpose, unwavering in good conduct of body, speech and mind, in gen generosity, self-discipline, observance of the fast day, in honouring parents, ascetics and Brahmins and the head of the clan, and in other highly meritorious acts, but performing that karma, heaping it up lavishly and, abundant, uh, and abundantly. At the breaking up of the body after death, he was reborn in a happy state, in a heavenly world, where he was endowed beyond other devas in ten respects. 
in length of heavenly life, beauty, happiness, splendor, influence, and in heavenly sights, sounds, smells, tastes, and contacts. Falling away from there and coming to be reborn here on earth, he acquired this mark of the great man. One, feet with level tread, so that he places his foot evenly on the ground, lifts it evenly, and touches the ground evenly with the entire soul. Being endowed with this mark, if he keeps to the household life, he will become a wheel-turning monarch, conquering without stick or sword. But by justice, he rules over this earth as far as its ocean-bound boundaries. As, as far as its ocean boundaries, a land open, uninfested by brigands, free from jungle, powerful, prosperous, happy and free from perils. As a ruler, how does he benefit? He cannot be impeded by any human foe with ill intent. That is his benefit as a ruler. And if he goes forth into homelessness, he will become a fully enlightened Buddha. As such, how does he benefit? He cannot be impeded by any enemy or adversary from within or without, from greed, hatred or delusion, nor by any ascetic or Brahmin, any Deva, Mara or Brahma, or any being in the world. That is his benefit as a Buddha. This was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, truthful, righteous, tamed and stilled, pure and virtuous, <coughs> keeping fast, generous, harming none, at peace, he undertook this mighty task, and at his end and at his end to heaven went, to dwell in joy and happiness, returned from there to earth, his feet with level tread did touch the ground. Assembled August then declared, For him who has level treads the ground, who level treads the ground, no obstacles can bar his path, if he leads the household life or if he leaves the world behind. This the mark does clearly show. If a layman, no adversary, no foe can stand before him. No human power exists that can deprive him of his karma's fruit. Or if the homeless life's his choice, on renunciation bent and clear of vision, chief of men he'll be, peerless, never more reborn. This is the law. This the law shall be for him. Monks, in whatever former life, the Tathagata, being born a human being, lived for the happiness of the many, as a dispeller of fright and terror, provider of lawful protection and shelter, and supplying all necessities by performing that karma was reborn in a happy state, a heavenly world, falling away from there and coming to be reborn here on earth. He acquired this mark of the great man. Two, on the soles of his feet are wheels of a thousand spokes, complete with fellow and hub. Being endowed with this mark, if he keeps to the household life, he will become a wheel-turning monarch. As a ruler, how does he benefit? He has a great retinue. He is surrounded by Brahmin householders, citizens and villagers, treasurers, guards, doorkeepers, ministers, tributary kings, tenants-in-chief, and pages. That is his benefit as a ruler. And if he goes forth into homelessness, he will become a fully enlightened Buddha. As such, how does he benefit? He has a large retinue. He is surrounded by monks, nuns, male and female lay followers, devas and humans, asuras, nagas and gandabas. That is his benefit as a Buddha. This was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, in times gone by, in former births, as man, to many doing good, dispelling fright and panic fear, eager to guard and give defense. He undertook this mighty task, and at his end to heaven went, to dwell in joy and happiness, returned from there to earth. His feet are found to bear the mark of wheels, each a thousand spoke, complete. Assembled augurs then declared, seeing these many marks of merit, great will be his following, all his foes he will subdue. This is the wheel marks clearly show. If he does not renounce the world, he will turn the wheel and rule the earth. The nobles will be his vassals, all in attendance on his power. But if the homeless life is his choice, on renunciation bent, and clear of vision, men and devas, asuras, sakas, rakasas, gandabas, nagas, garudas, four-foot beasts will serve him too, unrivaled by devas and by men, alike revered in all his glory. Monks, in whatever former life, the Tathagata, being born a human being, rejecting the taking of life and abstaining from it, 
and laying aside stick and sword, dwelt kind and compassionate, having friendship and sympathy for all living beings. By performing that karma, was reborn in a happy state. Falling away from there and coming to be reborn on earth, he acquired these three marks of the great man. Three, projecting heels, four, long fingers and toes, and fifteen, a divinely straight body. Being endowed with these marks, if he keeps to the household life, etc. As a ruler, how does he benefit? He is long-lived, long-enduring, attaining a great age, and during that time no human foe can possibly take his life. As a Buddha, how does he benefit? He is long-lived, no foe, whether an ascetic or Brahmin, a Deva, Mara or Brahma, or anyone in the world can possibly take his life. That is his benefit as a Buddha. This was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, knowing well their dread of death, beings he forbore to kill. His goodness earned him heavenly birth, where he rejoiced in merit's fruit. Returning thence to earth he bore on his person these three marks. His heels are full and very long. Brahma like his straight of form, fair to see and shapely limbed, his fingers tender, soft and long. But these three marks of excellence <clears throat> it's known the youth will be long-lived. Long he'll live in household life, longer still as a homeless one, practicing the noble powers, so the three marks indicate. Monks, in whatever former life, the Tathagata became a giver of fine food, delicious and tasty, hard and soft, and of drinks. By performing that karma, he was reborn in a heavenly world. Falling away from there and being reborn here on earth, he acquired this mark of the great man. 16. The seven convex surfaces on both hands, both feet, both shoulders and his trunk. Being endowed with this mark as a ruler, how does he benefit? He receives fine food and drinks. As a Buddha, likewise. This was what the Lord said. About this it was said. Dispenser of delicious foods and finest tasting drinks he was. His goodness brought him happy birth, and long he dwelt in Andana, as the uh, grove uh, in the Tavatimsa heaven. To earth returned the seven signs on gently swelling limbs he bore. Assembled August then declared, fine food and drink he would enjoy, not merely in the household life, for though he should renounce the world and cut the bonds of worldly living, delicious food he'd still receive. Monks, in whatever former life the Tathagata made himself beloved through the four bases of sympathy, generosity, pleasing speech, beneficial conduct, and impartiality. On returning to this earth, he, re he acquired these two marks of the great man, soft and t tender hands and feet, and net like hands and feet. <clears throat> Being endowed with these two marks, as a ruler, how does he benefit? All his retinue are well disposed to him, Brahmin householders, citizens and villagers, treasurers, guards, doorkeepers, pages. As a Buddha, how does he benefit? All his followers are well disposed to him, monks, nuns, male and female lay followers, devas and humans, asuras, nagas, gandabas. That is his benefit as a Buddha. This is what the Lord said. About this it was said, through giving and through helpful acts, pleasing speech and evenness of mind, of benefit to all, he at death to heaven went. When, when he thence returned to earth, his hands and feet were soft and tender, his toes and fingers nightwise spread. Very fair he was to see, thus the infant was endowed. He'll be ruler of the people, surrounded by a faithful flock, fair of speech to good deeds given, in conduct virtuous and wise. But if the joys of sense he spurns, a conqueror, he will teach the path, and delighted by his words, all those who hear will follow him in Dhamma's great and lesser ways. Monks, in whatever former life, the Tathagata became a speaker to the people about their welfare, about Dhamma, explaining this to people, and being a bearer of welfare and happiness to beings, a dispenser of Dhamma. On returning to this earth, he acquired these two marks of the great man, high raised ankles and upward growing body hairs. Being endowed with these marks as a ruler, how does he benefit? He becomes the chief, foremost, highest, supreme among the unrenounced. 
As a Buddha, he becomes the chief, foremost, highest, supreme among all beings. That is his benefit as a Buddha. This is what the Lord declared. About this it was said. One time he spoke of all that's good, preaching loud to all mankind, bringing blessings to all beings, liberal dispenser of the law. For such conduct and such deeds, heavenly birth was his reward. Here returned, two marks were his, marks of happiness supreme, upward growing body hairs, ankles high above the foot, built up beneath the flesh and skin, well formed above and beautiful. If he leads the household life, the greatest riches will be his, no greater man will be found. As Jambudipa's lord he'll rule. If supremely strong, he leaves the world, he will be the chief of beings, no man greater will be found. As Lord of all the world, he rule. <coughs> Monks, <coughs> in whatever former life, the Tathagata became a skilled ex exponent of a craft, a science, a way of conduct or action, thinking, what can I learn quickly and acquire, quickly practice without undue weariness? On returning to earth, he acquires this mark of the great man, eight legs like an antelope's. Being endowed with this mark, as a ruler, he quickly acquires whatever things befit a ruler. The things that pertain to a ruler delight him and are appropriate to him. As a Buddha, likewise, this was what the Lord declared. About that it was said, arts and sciences, ways and deeds, let me learn with ease, he says. Skills that harm no living thing, fast he learnt with little toil. From such deeds, skilled and sweet, graceful and fair his limbs will be while fairly set in spiral curves, from tender skin the hair stand up. Antelope legged is such a man, wealth, they say, will soon be his. Each single hairlet brings him luck, if he maintains the household life. But should he choose to leave the world, on renunciation set, clear-eyed, all things he'll quickly find, befitting such a lofty cause. Monks, in whatever former life, the Tathagata approached an ascetic or Brahmin and asked, Sir, what is the good, what is the bad, what is blameworthy, what is not, what cause is to be followed, what is not, what if I do, it will be to my lasting sorrow and harm, what to my lasting happiness. On returning to this earth, he acquired this mark of the great man. 12. His skin is so delicate and smooth that no dust can adhere to his body. Being endowed with this mark, as a ruler he will be very wise, and among the unrenounced there will be none equal or superior to him in wisdom. As a Buddha he will have great wisdom, extensive wisdom, joyous wisdom, swift wisdom, penetrative wisdom, discerning wisdom, and among all beings there will be none equal to him or superior to him in wisdom. This is what the Lord declared. About this it was said, in former days, in former births, eager to know a questioner, he waited on the homeless ones, keen to learn the truth, he would heed their words about life's goal. The fruit of this, when born again, as man, his skin was soft and tender, assembled August thus declared, subtle meanings he'll discern, if he does not leave the world, he'll be a wheel revolving king. Wise to know all subtleties, equaled or surpassed by none. But should he choose to leave the world, a renunciation set, highest wisdom will be his. Enlightenment supreme and vast. Stop here for a moment. Nah. This one, nah, talking about his skin is so delicate and smooth nah, that no dust can adhere to his body. Nah. This contradicts the Vinaya books. Nah. In the Vinaya books, the Buddha said, nah, he... Uh, never bathed for so long uh, that all the dirt, all the ducky, uh, the dirt accumulated on his, uh, on his flesh uh, and he never bothered to rub it off. Uh, uh, it grew so thick that it just flaked off by itself. Uh, uh. Monks, in whatever former life the Tathagata lived without anger, perfectly unruffled, and even after many words had been uttered, was not abusive or agitated or wrathful or aggressive, displaying neither anger nor hatred nor resentment, but was in the habit of giving away fine soft rugs, cloaks, fine linen, fine linen, cotton, silk and woolen stuffs. On returning to this earth, <coughs> 
He acquired this mark of the great man, eleven, a bright complexion, the color of gold. Being endowed with this mark, as a ruler, he will receive such fine stuffs as a Buddha likewise. This was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, established in goodwill, he gave gifts of clothing, fine and soft. In former lives he thus dispensed, as the rain god pours, pours down showers. This goodness brought him heavenly birth, where he rejoiced in marriage fruit. That time passed like fine wrought gold, his body is more fair than all. The gods he seems, great Indra's like. If he lives the household life, he'll regulate this wicked world. And for what he's done, receive clothes of finest quality, rocks and coverlets of the best. And should he choose to leave the world, such things likewise he'll receive. Virtue's fruit cannot be lost. Monks, in whatever former life, the Tathagata reunited those long lost with relatives, friends and companions who had missed them. Reunited mother with child and child with mother, father with child and child with father, brother with brother, brother with sister and sister with brother, making them one again with great rejoicing. On returning to earth, he acquired this mark of the great man. Ten, his male organs are enclosed in a sheath. Being endowed with this mark, as a ruler, he will have numerous sons, more than a thousand sons, powerfully built heroes, crushers of the enemy host. As a Buddha, likewise, this was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, in former days, in former births, long lost friends and relatives, companions too he brought together, thus uniting them in joy. This good deed brought heavenly birth, bliss and joy were his reward. When he thence returned to earth, sheath and clothes his organs were. Numerous children such will have. More than a thousand sons are his. Hero champions, conquerors, and filial too, the layman's joy. But if he leaves the world, still more with children he will be endowed. Those who depend upon his word, and so renounce or not, design such benefits as this portends. Monks, in whatever former life, the Tathagata, considering the welfare of people, knew the nature of each, knew each one himself, and knew how each one deferred. This one deserves such and such, that one deserves so and so. So he distinguished them. On returning to earth, he acquired these two marks of the great man. 19. He is proportioned like a banyan tree. And 9. Standing without bending, he can touch and rub his knees with both hands. Being endowed with these marks, as a ruler, he will be rich of great wealth and resources, having a full treasury of gold and silver, all sorts of goods, and his granary will be full of corn. As a Buddha, he will be wealthy and rich, and these will be his treasures, faith, morality, moral shame, moral dread, learning, renunciation, and wisdom. This was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, weighing in the balance, noting, seeking people's benefit, seeing this one that deserves and that one this, he judged them. Now he can unbending stand and touch his knees with both his hands, and his tree like girth and height is the fruit of virtuous deeds. Those who read the marks and signs, experts in such law declare, things that suit the household life, as a child he'd get in plenty. Much worldly wealth as this Lord's, as this world's Lord, as befits a layman, shall be his. But should he renounce wealth, but should he worldly wealth renounce, he'll gain the wealth that's unsurpassed. Monks, in whatever form of life the Tathagata desired the welfare of the many, their advantage, comfort, freedom from bondage, thinking how they might increase in faith, morality, learning, renunciation, in dhamma, in wisdom, in wealth and possessions, in bipeds and quadrupeds, in wives and children, in servants, workers and helpers, in relatives, friends and acquaintances. On returning to earth, he acquired these three marks of the great man. 17. The front part of his body is like a lion's. 18. There is no hollow between his shoulders. And 20. His bust is evenly rounded. Being endowed with these marks, as a ruler, he cannot lose anything. Wealth and possessions, bipeds and quadrupeds, wives and children losing nothing. He will succeed in all things. As a Buddha, he cannot lose anything. Faith, morality, learning, renunciation, or wisdom. Losing nothing, he will succeed in all things. This was what the Lord declared. 
About this it was said, Faith, morality, learning, wisdom, restraint and justice, much good else, wealth, possessions, wives and sons, flocks, kin, friends, colleagues, strength, good looks and happiness. These things he wished for others that they might keep and never lose. So lion-fronted he was born, not hollow-backed and drowned before. Through past good karma, well stored up, with such birthmarks spared all loss. In household life he is rich in goods, in wife and sons and quadrupeds, or if renounced, possessing not. Supreme enlightenment is his, where no failure enters in. Monks, in whatever former life the Tathagata was one who avoided harming beings by hand, by stone, stick or sword. On returning to earth, he acquired this mark of the great man, 21. There is a perfect sense of taste. Whatever he touches with the tip of his tongue, he tastes in his throat, and the taste is dispersed everywhere. Being endowed with this mark, as a ruler, he will suffer little distress or sickness. His digestion will be good, being neither too cold nor too hot. As a Buddha, likewise, he is also equable and tolerant of exertion. This is what the Lord declared. About this it was said, harming none by hand, stick, stone, causing death to none by sword, harmless, threatening none with bonds. With happy birth he gained the fruit of these good deeds, and then reborn, erect his taste buds and well set. Those who know the marks declare, great happiness will be his lot, as layman or as wanderer. That's the meaning of this sign. Monks, in whatever former life the Tathagata was accustomed to look at people, not askance, obliquely or furtively, but directly, openly and straightforwardly, and with a kindly glance. On returning to earth, he acquired these two marks of the great man, 29, deep blue eyes, and 30, eyelashes like a cow's. Being endowed with these marks, as a ruler, he will be looked upon with love by the common people. He will, he will be popular and loved by Brahmin householders, citizens and villagers, treasurers, guards, doorkeepers, pages. As a Buddha, he will be popular with and loved by monks, nuns, male and female lay followers, devas and humans, asuras, nagas and gandabas. This is what the Lord declared. About this it was said, not looking askance, obliquely, or turning aside his glance, he looks direct and openly at folk, with candor and with kindly eye. In happy place reborn, he there enjoys the fruits of his good deeds. Reborn here, his lashes are like a cow's, his eyes are blue. Those who know such things declare, as a child with such fine eyes will be, one who is looked upon with joy. If a layman does, he will be pleasing to the sight of all. As ascetic he become, if ascetic he becomes, then loved as healer of folks' woes. Monks, in whatever former life the Tathagata became the foremost in skilled behavior, a leader in right action of body, speech and mind, in generosity, virtuous conduct, observance of us, in honoring father and mother, ascetics and brahmins, and the head of the clan, and in various other proper activities. On returning to earth, he acquired this mark of the great man, 32, a head like a royal turban. Being endowed with this mark, as a ruler, he will receive the loyalty of Brahmin householders, citizens. As a Buddha, he will receive the loyalty of monks, nuns, etc. This was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, he led the way in conduct then, intent on living righteously. Thus folk were loyal to him here, and heavenly reward was his. And after that reward was done, he reappeared with turban head. Those who know the signs declared, he will be the first of men, all will serve him in this life, just as was the case before. If a noble man of wealth, he'll gain the service of his folk. But should he leave the world, this man of doctrine will a master be, and all the folk will flock to hear the teaching that he will proclaim. Monks, in whatever former life the Tathagata, rejecting false speech, put away lies and became a truth speaker, wedded to the truth, reliable, consistent, not deceiving the world. On returning to earth, he acquired these two marks of the great man. 13. His body hair separate, one to each paw. And 31. The hair between his brows, white and soft like cotton down. 
being endowed with these marks. As a ruler, he will be obeyed by Brahmin householders, etc. As a Buddha, he will be obeyed by monks, etc. This is what the Lord declared. About this it was said, true to his promise in past births, sincere of speech, he shunned all lies, breaker of his word to none. He pleased by truth and honesty, white and bright and soft as down, the hair appeared between his brows, and from one paw no two hairs grew, but each one separate appeared, assembled August thus declared, with such a mark between the brows and such hairs, he'll be obeyed by all, and if a layman still, they'll respect him for past deeds, if renounced, possessionless, as Buddha they will worship him. Monks, in whatever life the Tathagata, rejecting slander, abstain from it, not repeating there what he had heard here to the detriment of these, or repeating what he had heard there to the detriment of those. Thus he was a reconciler of those at variance, and an encourager of those at one, rejoicing in peace, loving it, delighting in it, one who spoke up for peace. On returning to earth, he acquired these two marks of the great man, 23, 40 teeth, and 25, no spaces between the teeth. Being endowed with these marks, as a ruler, his followers, Brahmin householders, citizens, etc., will not be divided among themselves. Likewise, as a Buddha, his followers, monks, nuns, etc., will not be divided among themselves. This was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, He is no speaker of wicked words that cause dissension or increase it prolonging strife and bitterness, leading to good friendship's end. What he spoke was all for peace and relinking severed bonds. His power he used to end all strife. Harmony was his delight. In happy realm reborn, he there enjoyed the fruits of his good deeds. Returned to earth, his teeth grew close, forty of them firmly set. If a nobleman of wealth, gentle will be his subjects. If a recluse free from taint, he'll set up his, his, well set up his flock will be. Monks, in whatever former life the Tathagata, rejecting harsh speech, abstained from it, spoke what was blameless, pleasing to the ear, agreeable, reaching the heart, urbane, pleasing and attractive to the multitude. On returning to earth, he acquired these two marks of the great man. 27. His tongue was very long, and 28. He had a Brahma-like voice, like the Karavika bird. Being endowed with these marks, as a ruler, he will have a persuasive voice. All Brahmin householders, citizens, etc., will take his words to heart. As a Buddha, too, he will have a persuasive voice. All monks, nuns, etc., will take his words to heart. This was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, he is no speaker of abuse, harsh and painful, hurting folk. His voice was gentle, kind and sweet, appealing to the hearts of folk and delightful to the ears. In happy realm reborn, he there enjoyed the fruits of his good deeds, having tasted this reward with Brahma voice and Tao. To earth he returned and long his tongue, and what he says will carry weight. If layman, he will prosper much. But if this man should leave the world, folk will take his words to heart and set great store by all he says. Monks, in whatever former life the Tathagata, rejecting idle chatter, spoke at the right time what was correct and to the point of Dhamma and Vinaya, and what was bound up with profit. On returning to earth, he acquired this mark of the great man, jaws like a lion's. Being endowed with this mark, as a ruler, he cannot be overcome by any human foe or opponent. As a Buddha, he cannot be overcome by any foe or hostile thing from within or without, by lust, hatred or delusion, by any ascetic or Brahmin, Deva, Mara, Brahma, or anything in the world. This was what the Lord declared. About this it was said, no idle talk or foolishness, fruit of scatter brain was his. Harmful things he put aside, speaking only all men's good. And so at death he went to heaven to taste the fruit of deeds well done. Returned to earth once more, his jaw resembled that of him, that's Lord, of all twice two-footed things. He will, a king un he will be a king unbeaten, 
Lord of men, of mighty power, like the Lord of threefold heaven, like the greatest of all of the gods, Gandabas, Sakas, Asuras, who strive in vain to cast him down. As layman does, he will be throughout all the quarters of the world. Monks, in whatever former life, the Tathagata, rejecting long, wrong livelihood, lived by right livelihood, refraining from cheating with false weights and measures, from bribery and corruption, deception and insincerity, from wounding, killing, imprisoning, highway robbery and taking goods by force. On returning to earth, he acquired these two marks of the great man. 24, even teeth, and 26, very bright canine teeth. Being endowed with these marks, if he keeps to the household life, he will be a wheel-turning monarch. As a ruler, his followers, Brahmin householders, etc., will be pure. But if he goes forth from the household life into homelessness, as a Buddha, his followers, monks, nuns, etc., will be pure. This is what the Lord declared. About this it was said, wrongful living he gave up and took a pure and righteous course. Harmful things he cast aside, working only for folk's good. Heaven brings him sweet reward for deeds he's done that earn the praise of those who are wise and skilled. He shares in all delights and joys like the Lord of threefold heaven. Falling thence to human state as residue of virtue's fruit, he gains evenness of teeth, purity and brightness too. Assembled August thus declared, will be the wisest of mankind, and pure his followers will be, whose even teeth like birds' plumes shine. As king his pure retainers will bow to his, their lord's command. Not oppressed by force, they will strive for general weal and joy. But if he dwells a wanderer, free from evil, all lust quenched, drawing back the veil, with vain, with pain and weariness all gone, he'll see this world and the next. And there lay folk and renounce, who flock to cast aside, as he has taught. Those, pure, those impure evil things he blames, thus his followers are pure, for he drives out from their hearts evil and corrupting states. That's the end of the sutta. I think we'll stop here for tonight. This is one of the suttas uh, where they try to praise the Buddha uh, and in praising the Buddha they uh, uh, how do you say uh, go over the hill uh, and besides uh, all these marks are not important uh, they are only important maybe to the Brahmins at that time uh, Hard, put, hard to believe eh, that this uh, sutta was spoken by the Buddha because it has nothing to do with the Four Noble Truths. Eh. that was put out by Japanese uh, looks like Japanese. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Just like Buddha statues. Uh, put, put out by Chinese look like Chinese. The one put out by Indians look like Indians. <laughs> Except 
Yes, in the uh, Buddha's time, uh, uh, the nuns, uh, they live uh, separately. Uh, only during the Vasa, uh, they're supposed to stay in a monastery where there are monks. Uh. So at other times, uh, they live separately and they, they only came to the monks for Dhamma teaching once in uh, two weeks uh, during the Uposatha. And probably the monk will only teach them for about an hour. La. So most of the time the Buddha was not with them. La. That's why the Dhamma talks, la. they were not there. La. And also we notice from the suttas and the Vinaya, the Buddha seldom talked to the nuns. Uh, he seemed to talk uh, generally only to the Arahan nuns. La. And these Arahan nuns, uh, uh, some of them with psychic power, sometimes they would come and see the Buddha in the middle of the night na, when the Buddha was more free no? because during the daytime na, the Buddha would be uh, quite busy. Na. People come to see the Buddha, disciples come to ask questions and all these things. And also the Buddha wanted to be alone na, to meditate. Uh, but at night uh, when people were sleeping, uh, the Buddha was quite active. Uh, sometimes devas would come to visit the Buddha in the middle of the night and ask questions and all that. Uh, and sometimes the Buddha would spend the night uh, contemplating Dhamma, uh, for example, like uh, not long after he was enlightened, uh, he wanted to understand the dependent origination, uh, Paticca Samuppada in more detail. Uh, and he spent the whole night uh, contemplating dependent origination. Uh, is a day-to-day -day guidance, la. the, 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 the nun uh, acharya and the upajaya, the, the teachers and the uh, preceptors uh, will guide them day-to-day. -day, but this Dhamma teaching uh, that once in two weeks on uh, the Uposatha days, uh, the Buddha asked the, what we call Mahateras, la, those who have uh, re, uh, uh, been ordained uh, with the higher ordination for 20 or more years uh, and they are experienced uh, then, th then they are the ones uh, they are, they are the other was the most senior monks uh, will teach the nuns uh. Mechi uh, actually are not uh, nuns. La. Mechis are eight preceptors. La. Mechis are eight preceptors. Just that because they want to stay long in the monastery, they shave their head. La. So in the like, Thai uh, tradition, uh, uh, Mechis are not considered as nuns, la, as uh, equivalent to lay people. La. Uh, so there are some uh, uh, forest monasteries in Thailand. Uh, they don't accept. Uh, they don't allow. Uh, no, they say don't allow. They don't uh, ordain Machi. Uh, but they have uh, quarters uh, for lay people to stay. Uh, so uh, uh, this, uh, whether it's lay people, eight preceptors, or Matches, uh, they can stay. Uh, so, because uh, um, if the monks want to practice, uh, then they don't want to be burdened uh, with uh, looking after the matchy and all that. Uh. So, actually, from experience, uh, we have seen uh, matches who come here, they can cause a lot of trouble. Uh. Uh, so, especially if they think uh, they, they, they are going to stay long, uh, then they, they uh, 
become too what no? too too smug, no? too too. They 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 think they are the long time residents here, so they they or they are somebody no? because they wear the robe. So actually, to be frank, no? my personal attitude is also I'm very reluctant to ordain matchy. No? Only if some somebody yeah, is very very up to the mark, no? very very sincere. And only I will ordain. Otherwise, I'm very reluctant to ordain. They can anybody can stay here as an eight preceptor, whether men or women. Yes. Yeah, of course, there is recognition uh, as Mechi, no? They are recognized as Mechi, that means uh, they are eight preceptors, but they are dedicated to staying in the monastery, no? Whereas those who don't shave their head, uh, even though they are eight preceptors, uh, they can come in and go out and all these things, no? But uh, once you shave their head and you ordain under a teacher, uh, there are obligations, la. And not so free to run here, run there. No? So it's more convenient no, for men and women no, to remain as eight preceptors no, without shaving their head, then they can go here, go there. No? Uh. Yeah, something like that. No? So they are not free to go here and go there. No? If they go without the teacher's permission, no? then the teacher doesn't recognize them as a, a disciple anymore. No? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm. Actually, if... Uh, person practices well, whether layman or laywoman, and is diligent, does his duty, doesn't create problems, then generally any monastery will welcome that person. So the woman don't really have to become a matchy, as long as it's of good behavior, can be welcome anywhere, don't have to announce. Okay, we'll end here.